Okay, so uh, today I will uh, the continue speech consumption formulations, uh, and the, uh, the we will actually uh, the focus more on the uh, the what uh, kind of our, uh, the speech consumption models uh, we will use uh, for our programs. And before moving to that, uh, again I will have a couple of uh, logistics. Uh, the um, first, um, we got our uh, credit. Uh, the, from the uh, Pittsburgh uh, Supercomputing Center uh, for this uh, lecture. So I believe you guys could use sufficient uh, CPU and GPU resources uh, for your course on project. Uh, and the uh, uh, assignment for coding assignment for each actually requires a GPU resource. Uh, and hopefully it can be uh, enough uh, for our uh, lecture. Uh, and uh, this one is actually uh, the cluster. So uh, you actually need to learn, study uh, some cluster computing uh, environment. And I actually want to have a, ask a question. How many people have ever used, for example, the job scheduler, like a SRAM or grid engine or whatever? Okay, not bad. Uh, so these are uh, more like uh, you guys cannot uh, the, do something in the SSH. You have to throw your job to the job scheduler, and then job scheduler assign your job to the available GPU or CPU, and then performing the, uh, the, uh, the some of the computing, which is uh, the generally we use uh, for the large scale uh, the experiments. And as I mentioned, speech recognition, generally we need to handle a uh, large scale experiments. So I think it could be a very good experience for you to learn that. And the, uh, this is in general, uh, the shared computing resource. So shared across hours, across the students in this course. So the, the credit we get is uh, the, the 70,000 CPU hours, which you, know, you guys can also convert it to the, some of the hours in the GPU. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the, this credit is for this entire course. So if, for example, someone greedily uh, using the uh, GPU or CPU resources, and then our credit will be gone and the other people cannot use it. So uh, please be careful about that. And also generally, this uh, Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center uh, the has our thousands of users. So if uh, we kind of did uh, something wrong, this affects to thousands of the researchers in CMU or the PIT or whatever are using these computing resources. So please be careful uh, about the use of this kind of uh, other cluster computing resources. Um, but the, uh, if we know uh, the, the, the system, uh, the, how it works, again, it is very useful and we can enjoy uh, the, the, uh, the high performance computing. So I think this will be a very good opportunity for you guys to run this. And the, uh, we are preparing some instructions of how to uh, use it. Uh, we actually put a lot of other data usages of how to use it in our app. So you guys can start to check this one, but probably we can make some additional documents uh, for this uh, particular coursework. But anyway, uh, with that, uh, you guys can actually build speech recognition model. So without that, it is not difficult. So we really kind of acknowledge uh, the, the uh, Pittsburgh uh, Supercomputing Center for supporting uh, our activities. Okay, so the other uh, the, the, uh, the comment is that, unfortunately, uh, lecture three video is not available uh, due to the, uh, the, uh, the software issues. And this happens a lot. So I try to kind of uh, deliver uh, our materials as much as possible, but please understand that it, uh, it's not always uh, that uh, happen. And the, especially the uh, video recording is uh, regarding video recording as an optional material. And the last <laughs> the comment uh, is that the short quiz can be multiple ones, not only one. So. Uh, the, uh, the be careful uh, if you just you know finish one of them and leaving this course is fine, but then that uh, you guys actually may have additional quizzes, uh, which you guys could lost some points. 
Okay, uh, the today, today's, uh, the, let's uh, the talk about uh, the today's uh, the, the agenda. Actually, the first part uh, is uh, the, I couldn't uh, the, do some demonstration for the CME dictionary. So I, I wanted to uh, the, do that today, but probably we don't have uh, time for this. But instead, you guys already did uh, the short quiz speeches through the CME dictionary. So I will just discuss about it. And uh, today I will also talk about the output unit. What kind of a unit uh, that we should use uh, for speech recognition, uh, alignment, uh, uh, and how to decompose the sequence and so on. Okay, so uh, let me uh, the, always uh, the, in this lecture, try to start uh, from this figure. Uh, and then for example, if we are talking about uh, the acoustic modeling or lexicon, I will uh, the highlight where I am uh, the talking about. Since this speech recognition is very complicated system, so people can easily be lost where we are. So in, uh, instead of you know just being lost, always I try to kind of give you the point of where I am talking about, so that you guys cannot be lost. Hopefully, by the way, uh, the uh, this one, this other uh, HMM based classical speech recognition pipeline uh, was explained before. And the, uh, that was based on the, uh, the some of the probabilistic rules and the conditional assumption, right? And then I just want you to review uh, this one uh, because it turns out that many students uh, made a mistake uh, for the, uh, the short quiz uh, in the last time. Uh, so given we have our, uh, the, the phoneme sequence, so first part is to kind of include this kind of phoneme sequence in the model, right? And uh, this one, uh, the uh, first line, uh, fitch rule uh, to be used. Okay, good. This is actually <laughs> uh, that many people are confused about the, the others. And the, uh, actually some people said beta V approximation, yeah. The second one, Given this kind of our uh, probability, we actually factorize the probability. Uh, how we call this uh, the operation rule, product rule? Yes. So actually, uh, the many people are actually uh, the showing the conditional independence assumption. Actually, here uh, we didn't do the, any conditional independence assumption. Conditional independence assumption is performed. Uh, here. Uh, from here to here, we actually ignore dependency of the word sequence. Uh, and by the way, this is a, again model assumption approximation. We are not very sure that this model is correct or not. So this is actually the, uh, the weak part of the uh, this factorization based approaches. Factorization itself uh, is not uh, the, the, uh, the making the problem uh, the, the easier. We always need to do the conditional independence assumption to make the model to be simple. But uh, this is assumption approximation modeling. So this can actually have an error. Okay, uh, and then the, uh, the, we kind of factorize uh, the entire speech recognition problem as a four component, uh, the feature extraction, acoustic model, lexicon and language modeling and so on. And the last time, again, I did not have, uh, the, due to the kind of a Wi-Fi issue, I couldn't make some uh, the demonstration about the lexicon part, but uh, this time uh, I believe people just enjoy the uh, CMU dictionary, right? And the, uh, I think that uh, the question query is COVID, right? And the, uh, the answer is COVID is not included in the dictionary. Uh, this actually uh, that gives me a lot of, uh, that gives us a lot of information. First, COVID is a new word, right? And the new word, uh, the most likely it will not have, have been registered in the dictionary. So even COVID now becomes a very popular word. It can be an out of vocabulary word. So it, of course, we, if we register it, we do some process. And then we can actually uh, recognize some words, but this kind of a new uh, the, the, uh, the world actually happens uh, in our daily life. 
So this is actually one of the difficulty of speech recognition, which is out of a vocabulary uh, problem. Okay, so uh, the, uh, this uh, it, this what uh, the I wanted to uh, mention, and now uh, the I will uh, uh, discuss more about uh, the how to solve this uh, speech recognition problem. And the, uh, the now I uh, the, the focus more on the output unit. Again, the goal of speech recognition is to output text information, right? However, text information has a several forms, uh, word, character, other phoneme, uh, and so on. And I will briefly discuss about the, the each of the other uh, the unit. Uh, it, uh, it actually has a pros and the cons. And this is actually uh, one of the configuration uh, that, uh, when we try to solve the problem. But I just want to uh, show you that we have such kind of options uh, when we model the problem. Okay, first in the end to end ASR case, of course, we don't, as I mentioned, we don't have an internal representation like a phoneme and so on. So the problem is try to directly predict the text, try to directly generate the text, right? However, text can be actually represented in many form. And in addition to this one, there would be more, but uh, I kind of listing the three uh, the representative ways to uh, the, the model uh, this text. First, we uh, the, uh, the use the word unit. And the, in our cases, for example, the phrase go to can be uh, the, uh, considered as a sequence of go and to. And the go to both are kind of a word, right? Which is probably more uh, the, the intuitive for people because that it's very kind of semantic uh, the, the, uh, representation uh, and so on. Um, uh, however, as I mentioned, that uh, vocabulary based approach always has a uh, the out of vocabulary issues like uh, COVID is a very good example. So in, due to that, the word-based approach is a little bit difficult uh, since we have to handle the out of vocabulary. Also, another important uh, uh, the factor is that length. Maybe I can go first explain about the character and then discuss about the length. So character cases, the phrase go to will be split to uh, five characters. By the way, I also include the space as a character. G O space T O five. And compared with the uh, the, uh, the word cases, we actually will not have a out of vocabulary issue, right? Because we already have a very defined character set. So we usually do not. Uh, have uh, the out of vocabulary uh, issues uh, by using the character. However, the difference uh, is that, the, of course, the, the, the word is more semantic. And actually, if we try to kind of capture the, uh, the, the information dependency of the semantic one, word may be better. Character, uh, the, it's possible, but we may need to consider very long context, right? And also, in general, Character is longer than word, right? This length of also has some kind of other uh, property. Uh, I would not say which is more difficult or uh, easy, but anyway, for example, the word cases, uh, go to is only two lengths. The length is only two, right? While it's a character case, it's fifth, five. It's actually 2.55 uh, times larger. And in general, English cases, uh, the, the, the character, uh, if you're using the character, the length will be three to five times uh, larger. It depends on the, uh, the, the conversational scenario. But if we're using the spontaneous speech, it can be a little bit smaller because we don't use a very long word. But in the, uh, the more kind of sophisticated uh, the presentations, uh, we have a, a lot of long word. And then actually the character becomes very, very large, very, very long. Uh, compared with the world. Again, it has a pros and cons, but in general, if it is very long, it is not easy to generate long sequence. What is easier? 
But at the same time, a speech recognition is actually also the, uh, the, the consider the conversion from the speech feature to character or uh, text information. And this one is always very, very long. So actually, if uh, we're using the word, only few words, to, for example, go to would be just one second. So speech can be the uh, input language can be usually uh, the uh, hundreds and so on. And then the, the input and output links are very different. Character is still different, but it's a little bit relaxing the condition and so on. So uh, always the unit has a pros and cons. Uh, and then the actually people are using something between uh, in the, the other speech equation, which is a uh, byte pair encoding. Uh, that is actually uh, the using the, a kind of piece of the, uh, the, uh, the world. Uh, in these cases, uh, uh, the, it's not the world, uh, but it, for example, they compose the D and the O, D go to with a D and O. And this one is kind of uh, the, the, the based on the original uh, the, the, uh, piece. So by using this uh, the, the, uh, the, the split, we could try to find something between of the word and the character. And in addition, uh, this can also control the vocabulary size. If we make this kind of a byte pair uh, the unit uh, the very large, uh, and then it's very close to the word-based recognition. So we can actually uh, the control the difficulty uh, based on the uh, this kind of technique. We will uh, have a more uh, discussion in the data in the speech recognition, end-to-end uh, -end answer speech recognition. But anyway, uh, the please uh, note that we have this kind of a flexibility here. Can you speak with the text does not need to be in the output? How would it be defined the output? Um, uh, the, 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 what does it mean that we shall be there? So let's say I need to build a uh, video that is uh, relevant to your native speech. So are there ways that I can not have the intermediate text output and still make that? Very, very good question. Very, very good question. Um, however, people still use uh, the speech recognition. Uh, but there, there are lots of ways to actually directly, for example, converting a speech information to some kind of a high level content uh, or intent and so on, or some kind of a only retrieval purpose. We only, for example, detect the particular words that are registered in the, uh, the, the our kind of a, uh, the dictionary and so on. There are such kind of ways, uh, the, but the many actually cases are the people go through speech recognition, which is uh, easier. <laughs> So, but it's a very good question, yeah. Okay, so uh, in, okay. Uh, can you compare the internal language model of the three uh, models? Would the word-based model have more semantic language model, particularly in words to compare that? Yes, yes, definitely. Actually, uh, the, the, the word-based has the more kind of benefit in terms of getting the wrong context and so on. And actually, the performance wise, uh, word is usually uh better except for the book out of vocabulary case out of vocabulary is another difficult issue so instead of people again are uh, often using the uh, vice parent coding nowadays yeah the character is still possible if we use a very good language model like you know uh, the, the transformer with very long context uh the end so on and then possibly of course you know uh, the, the history can also include the representation of the world right so with that, the, uh, the, the, the performance gap is not very large, but still uh, the, the some form of the word or uh, the, the sub-word uh, is better uh, the, for some semantic task. And the, the, the speech condition is also you know, using the language model context. So it's actually uh, the, the, uh, affects the performance and so on. This part is, by the way, again, one of the configuration. <laughs> yeah, one of the configuration. I actually didn't skip, uh, the speak about the, the, the language variation. But for example, if we use a different language, uh, Chinese, Japanese, and so on, the story is completely different. <laughs> First, we don't have a word boundary. <laughs> and we also have a very uh, large vocabulary size for the, just for the character. So actually, many of the, uh, the Japanese Chinese system are uh, the using character, which is as a good thing. Yes. Um, so does it make sense to even have an intermediate representation in end-to-end -end system as well, like let's say the 30 for us? 
have that as your very, very good question. Actually, uh, the, there are such kind of uh, the studies a lot. The reason is because end-to-end -end system actually doesn't have handle the uh, the uh, doesn't handle the, uh, the the out of vocabulary problem a lot. For example, even we use the uh, the word or uh, byte pair uh, and so on. To get the matching from the input to output, we need to compare data, right? The COVID is a very good case, uh, the example. Uh, if if uh, the speech recognition system, uh, we didn't feed any other uh, pair of the data of the speech and the COVID corresponding to the uh, text that is COVID. Uh, the, it's even uh, the COVID can be uh, the, uh, the represented by some kind of byte uh, the sentence piece. It can be possibly recognized. But actually, it turns out that this performance is very bad. However, we easily can, for example, incorporate the COVID and the corresponding uh, the, the pronunciation and the modeling it in the, uh, the, the intermediate representation, right? Uh, in this case, uh, the, actually, the registering the word is very easy, and we can easily recognize it. So this program is actually existing in the end-to-end -end system. Uh, and the other with the, one of the solution is actually using the phoneme representation. So even sometimes end-to-end -end ASR system is not uh, directly predicting the text. Some of the system actually predicting a phoneme, by the way. Depend, again, this is more like a configuration. So anyway, uh, in this uh, the, the lecture, I will uh, the not specify, for example, in the, especially in the end-to-end -end SR system, I do not specify uh, which uh, the unit I am using. Again, this is more like uh, the, the configuration. Uh, but the, the, we can just, you know, uh, the, the specify uh, the, the whether word or character or byte pair encoding or whatever, uh, depending on your application. Okay. And the... Yes, the, the second uh, the, the, uh, the interesting representation is, as you mentioned, the phoneme. Phoneme is very important, yes. Uh, since it is very intuitive, right? And also the phoneme, people who are using phoneme, phoneme or phone is very similar to our acoustic feature, right? This is, I think, the, the biggest motivation that people started to use phoneme. Uh, the, this, uh, the, the, I will call it more acoustic. Uh, this representation is more acoustic. Um, however, uh, the phoneme uh, requires a dictionary to consist the, the output, the phoneme output. Uh, the, some people could understand, but most of the people actually cannot understand it. So the, the, we need our, uh, the, the phone, phone uh, the, the dictionary to convert it to text. But in other words, if we have such kind of vocabulary, uh, the speech recognition system just focus on the phone. And then the other part, like the phone to uh, the word conversion and the language model can be done by the other external resources. So due to that, uh, the phone system is also actually still uh, widely used. By the way, we will also have more <laughs> fine uh, the uh, resolution of uh, the uh, Unit which is uh, the it's sorry it is not very concrete but the, the generally people call it state. So this is more fine uh, the, the resolution uh, than the phoneme and usually we just splitting the phoneme to three states and then regarding it as the uh, the most uh, the the, uh, the the primitive uh, the uh, target uh, the for uh, the, the speech recognition. And the, the reason of this kind of a, a more fine resolution is that, the, as I mentioned, the phoneme is more acoustic, right? And if, uh, the state should be uh, the even more acoustic because it's further kind of uh, the factorized the time resolution uh, from the, the phoneme to this kind of state. And it can be uh, the possibly more uh, the similar to the acoustic uh, the information. So that the people actually using uh, this state, uh, state uh, the, the, the uh, representation uh, in the, uh, the classical uh, HMM based system, which I will explain it later. But uh, this uh, the, the, the two slide is just showing that we have a lot of ways to represent the output unit. 
And the speech recognition in the end-to-end -end system, mostly we focus on text. So it can be a word or uh, the a character. But in the HM-based system, we target to the phoneme. And even we sometimes more focus on the, the more resolutional target, which is state. Yes. So phoneme also has the phoneme uh, representation also has um, a smaller dictionary, right? Um, so in that case, would we face similar issues like a character which uh, in visual? Yes, yes. It's harder uh, such kind of uh, issue. Uh, but the the nice part uh, is of this other uh, phoneme uh, representation uh, is that the, uh, the from this part to this part is completely uh, the making the problem to the other uh, phonetic information and which can be actually how to say uh, independent of the language and so on. Uh, or independent of the uh, any word and so on. This kind of module, particular module, is just try to kind of make our problem to uh, uh, providing a better phone information. That's it. And then, yes, we need a dictionary. But if we have a dictionary, uh, we actually combine this information and then produce the text. Again, that if we uh, the end to end system, we don't have this kind of layer. So we need more than this our care design of the speech and component problem. But we have our, uh, the, the, the making this kind of uh, the, the speech, uh, the model, uh, the, 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 we just focus on the phony uh, the information. And then from here to here, we use our knowledge. Like in the COVID, we know the, the, the phony representation, right? And then we can combine the thing. And then we can actually recognize this. So uh, the, this is actually, uh, the, yeah, it's a very good question, by the way. This is actually uh, the still people are uh, discussing which one is better, end to end versus a uh, phoneme and the HM based approaches, uh, and so on. So, uh, this part uh, uh, should be a, 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 a good discussion items. And this lecture, I try to make this, uh, keeping this style. I mean, I try to kind of explain something in the HM based system or end to end system. And I try to kind of explain about the counterpart of this kind of a concept uh, in the, uh, the, the other uh, models and so on, so that we can kind of find the difference uh, of the other uh, technologies uh, the, in, the, uh, the, uh, the, in this kind of both other uh, streams. Okay, so uh, the, the rest of the part, I will also introduce a very important concept. Uh, this is called alignment. And again, this is actually also entire all kind of speech recognition models. This concept is very important. So I'd like to spend some time to explain about this. First, uh, the, the, uh, the, yes, we, for example, uh, the, the problem of the speech recognition uh, is that, that we have this kind of uh, the output Character sequence. Uh, now I use a uh, character as a output unit. We use this kind of a three output C. And then the actually uh, the, the uh, this uh, the, the uh, picture is actually the uh, MSCC uh, the feature. And this is uh, uh, the I think it corresponds to the 60. Uh, or more uh, the, the, of the feature sequence and so on. But here, the, this is a kind of uh, the uh, simplification of my slide. I make it only 30, but it can be probably 60 or 80, uh, yeah, depending on the, uh, the, uh, our uh, feature structure. But anyway, uh, the, this one is very different, right? Three and uh, 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 the 60 uh, and so on. So uh, the, the how to combat, how to make a relationship with this kind of two sequence. This is the most crit critical part uh, in speech recognition. And of course, one possibility is that we will, for example, estimate which feature corresponding to uh, the which kind of uh, the output. Uh, but, uh, this can be this pattern, or uh, this can be 
uh, this pattern. We don't know uh, really. We, really, we don't know uh, which is appropriate. Probably uh, the, the, at least we cannot make some supervised uh, the, the information. So we need to uh, the estimate uh, this kind of information. So this are the, are the uh, way of uh, making the correspondence of the input and the output uh, is called the alignment. And this uh, alignment uh, process uh, is actually quite important uh, for speech recognition. And this uh, the, the alignment is particularly called as a hard alignment uh, because we view uh, the, the deterministically uh, the align uh, this uh, the one, two, four feature to this one and five to uh, the, some of them uh, to the second one uh, the, and so on. So the, the, this uh, is the hard alignment. And it sounds like this is the only way to align the model, right? But there is actually the other way. Uh, this is called soft alignment, uh, which is mostly used for the attention-based approaches. This actually tries to kind of, uh, we do not uh, the, um, specifically uh, try to, for example, align each of the other uh, frame to the specific uh, the, the, uh, the output. But instead, uh, the, the soft alignment based approach is try to predict the probability uh, of, for example, third and fourth frame can have a higher probability to be assigned to this other uh, first S. And uh, uh, the second one can have a little bit long distribution, but anyway, many of these kind of regions can be assigned to uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the second output. Although this is probabilistic, so it's not zero to one. And the third is like that. So this uh, the assignment alignment is called the soft alignment. And this one is probably if the, some of you take the kind of NLP uh, courses and so on, uh, you guys may be familiar with uh, this uh, the, the soft alignment. Actually, attention-based approach uh, is based on this uh, the soft alignment. Uh, this is a uh, very good uh, the way to uh, model the kind of input and output. But for speech recognition, another important concept is again hard alignment. So uh, the people actually using the both uh, the, 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 uh, the modeling uh, to uh, represent the correspondence uh, between the input and output. By the way, this uh, the hard alignment, uh, the soft alignment can be actually modeled. Um, Especially, we introduce one kind of uh, the variable, sequence of the variable. For example, uh, in these cases, Z1 corresponds to this character, uh, Z2 also corresponds to this one, and uh, three, four, so for this one, right? And the five to, I don't know, uh, the 12 or something is this second one. And the, the, uh, from here to here, uh, this uh, the, is uh, the assigned to uh, this. Uh, the third character, right? So actually, uh, the, this uh, the alignment information, hard alignment information, is mathematically written as a system, which has the same length as the input, and then each kind of uh, the each um, each input feature, uh, we have an information of whether this is assigned to the first S or second E or third E, uh, and so on. So by using this information, uh, we actually can also add a model add a hard alignment uh, in the probabilistic framework. By the way, I call it the probabilistic framework because again, this, aside, this is hard assignment in terms of this one is, you know, the definitely uh, the, the, uh, the aligned. This one has a, uh, will not be split to the, the two kind of output. It should be always kind of belong to one of them. In this sense, hard uh, the alignment. However, we still have a variation. Whether uh, the, this will be aligned uh, the, the, this way or this way, or you know, all possible uh, the alignment uh, we should consider. So this uh, the Z, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the having the information of the hard alignment is actually uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, we regarding it as the probability. 
and then estimating or the, the, uh, the getting the expected value uh, to uh, deal with this kind of uh, the alignment problem. And uh, this uh, the representation is also often used as a polaris. So this is actually quite a uh, uh, useful uh, way to kind of uh, represent the all possible uh, the alignment. So uh, the, I also would like you to have a more uh, the practice about uh, this part. This is also very important. I'm always actually writing the tolerance when I kind of thinking about new uh, the alignment models and so on. So anyway, the previously we just you know make it a kind of uh, the, uh, the line uh, the uh, two lines of the input and the output, but uh, this one is actually used as a two dimensional uh, graph. Uh, one is the, the corresponding feature. Apologize that I instead of having a thirty two or uh, the other sixty. It's kind of simplified, it's the only five. Uh, but anyway, uh, the only uh, the five uh, the input feature and the output uh, is the, uh, the, all, the three legs of the output. And then each of the, uh, the assignment, uh, for example, this part corresponding to having a first part is two part is S, Second two part is second E, and the third part, this uh, fifth part is correspond to second E, uh, and so on. So uh, by uh, using this kind of uh, tolerance uh, information, we can actually uh, the, uh, the, uh, write the, uh, the our kind of uh, the alignment information uh, more uh, efficiently uh, in the graph. And as you can imagine that this is, you know, uh, the, the, the graph and then, you know, all possible uh, the, the, the uh, passes to reach to the represent this alignment would be uh, the easily kind of uh, becomes the, the exponential. So it's a very large uh, the problem. Uh, by the way, uh, this case is not only the, uh, the possible alignments, actually depending on the model, we could actually have a lot of possible alignments, uh, which sounds like a tricky, but anyway, you know, uh, just jumping from uh, the, just one frame to produce a two output. This is a skip based approach. And other uh, sounds this is another kind of uh, uh, the, um, uh, alignment method. This is actually, even without consuming the frame, it's actually uh, the, uh, it can possibly produce uh, all the uh, the uh, output sequence and so on. So anyway, uh, this uh, the tolerance is a uh, good way for us to understand the alignment. Uh, but uh, depending on the model, whether we have a skip or we have a, uh, the the other kind of transitions and so on, this uh, the, the alignment uh, the uh, the graph tolerance information are actually quite different. But anyway, this is actually uh, the used uh, for many of our kind of uh, uh, the, the speech recognition problems. And the, 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 uh, the, 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 I just want to summarize that the, I usually kind of dis, uh, discuss the uh, HMM-based system, CTC, RN transducer, and attention-based approaches. And actually, uh, the, uh, these uh, uh, hard alignment approaches are uh, 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 the, 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 actually HMM, CTC, and RN transducer actually using this hard alignment uh, based representation. While the uh, attention based approach uh, uses uh, this uh, soft alignment uh, based approaches. So in this sense, the, the HM-based system and the other end-to-end uh, -end system like a CTC and RN transducer are uh, in the same family in the sense that it's using the hard alignment. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, the um, uh, the concept of the alignment. Uh, this you guys have some. Uh, you guys have some questions? Yes. Um, it's a very good question. Uh, that generally speaking, 
for example, this it might be depend on the model. PTC will consume one input for one character or other data word or whatever. This is the kind of model that are there. They are a different uh, model. And the HTML, left to right HTML, usually spends uh, uh, more than three uh, features per point view. This is like a model. And then RN transducer actually can be more flexible. Even uh, the, it can output the token without uh, consuming the other uh, plane, without kind of make some alignment and so on. Uh, RN transistor is more, uh, the, the most kind of flexible uh, since uh, it does not have to actually consume one frame and so on when the assignment uh, alignment problem uh, and so on. But it's uh, that depend on the model. But basically uh, the, the same. I mean, the, this. Uh, the hard assignment. Basically, may, many of the models can be written like this, except for the attention-based approaches. Attention-based approach is a soft alignment. So it could not have a, yeah, there are several advanced studies, by the way, to make attention-based approach to be hard alignment, which I am actually now also that are working on it, but this is more like an extension. Okay, so, uh, let's uh, the, the go to the, uh, the, uh, the final uh, part of the, uh, today's talk. So uh, given this alignment problem, we actually try to further model our problems. And let's go start, uh, let's start from the simple, easier one, uh, attention-based ASR, because it doesn't have an intermediate representation. So there is, of course, you know, this means that we have to use a gigantic uh, neural network. Uh, but uh, in terms of the problem, uh, the formulation, it is very simple. So I'm starting from the attention-based SR. So uh, the, not only for the attention-based SR, but anyways, the end-to-end the, the -end, uh, based approach is try to kind of directly solve the PW given law that I mentioned before. Always starting from this one, by the way, yeah. However, it is very difficult even you know attention-based approach uh, that the can make this kind of neural network, um, this uh, the part uh, should actually have the more treatment because the as, especially for the output, uh, it's very complicated. Output is based on the sequence, and uh, since this is sequence, so it, which means that it has actually many possible uh, the variations. And it is very, uh, it is not easy to uh, directly dealing with the sequence itself. So instead, uh, from now on, uh, the, not only for attention-based approaches, all the other approaches, we try to factorize the output. That actually makes the problem easier. And then the, uh, the uh, for the attention-based approaches, we actually are factorizing the problem uh, like this. Uh, this is uh, based on the probabilistic uh, chain rule. And once uh, this, uh, the, uh, the factorization was done, each of this kind of factor was actually modeled by the attention-based uh, approach. So the only uh, the, uh, the treatment uh, from here to here is the probabilistic chain rule to factorize uh, this uh, probability. And then now I move to the short quiz too. <laughs> Can you uh, the activate it? So the question here is that I call it the probabilistic chain, but this is actually derived from some of the rules or approximation that I mentioned in the beginning. And it's actually one of the uh, homework. So if someone already finished the homework, you guys could answer it. But then the question is uh, the probability pitch uh, rule or approximation uh, we use to derive probabilistic chain rule.
Okay, 28 people are voting. I think Rachel, uh, one of you. Okay, uh, the, we now have a 43 and uh, Okay, uh, the, maybe we can close the uh, poll now. By the way, the reason I uh, the make this short quiz pitch is a little bit similar to the last time uh, was that the last time your you guys performance was not so good, <laughs> so I wanted to just you know uh, review it. Uh, this is this how to say uh, the way of thinking you know uh, the, the solving the problem by the uh, the probabilistic rules or uh, the, the some approximations are very important when we uh, the formulate our problem. Uh, even neural network error, this is important, right? Uh, the, because this one is actually chain rule. And this is, by the way, based on the product rule, right? Yeah. Uh, product rule, chain rule to factorize this kind of approach and then solving it. So uh, the, uh, the, this kind of probabilistic rule actually makes our problem plausible. And then I will uh, the answer your question about the why the, the, the we also the, the, the using the hard assignment. Actually, soft assignment and the hard assignment, of course, has the pros and the cons. Soft might be better in terms of you know since it doesn't have a, uh, the, the the hard decision right, and then some you know uncertainty theory. Probably soft may be better. However. Uh, speech recognition also want to uh, the, the sometimes want to have uh, information about the specific alignment, hard alignment information, which is, for example, let's say uh, this information and uh, this information, which one is more intuitive? Definitely this, <laughs> the hard alignment is quite intuitive, right? Or oh, this first, the one to four, uh, the frames are actually uh, the, uh, the, the belonging to the first uh, the, the, the character and so on, first interpretability. Uh, but still, uh, the, the soft alignment by using, you know, uh, the argmax and so on, we could ma uh, make it, but the, the one other uh, reason is the uh, interpretability. And the, the other is actually very important. Um, speech recognition actually wants to provide the result in a streaming manner, uh, which means that the, instead of we kind of finish to sweep all the kind of features, we want to output the, uh, the some kind of uh, the, the partial sequence, uh, the frame by frame, right? And then hard alignment based approach is easy because we have this kind of correspondence. So, okay. Uh, uh, this is still, uh, we need the model to estimate this boundary, but once we kind of find this boundary, okay, it's time to output this one, right? Without waiting all of this kind of uh, uh, the, the features. However, soft alignment based approach is generally need to consider all possible uh, the, 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 the probability across the frames and then make some decision. So again, there, there's a, a lot of approximation to do it, which I am again working on this, like, you know, making some windowing and so on. Uh, but the, in general, uh, the uh, hard alignment based approach is easier for the online streaming application. Okay, uh, now I finished the short quiz, right? But anyway, the attention-based SR, uh, the, the probabilistic chain rule is the, uh, the one of the only uh, the, the, uh, modeling we will usually use to factorize the problem. 
Second, CTC or RN transducer cases. And this is still end to end, uh, directly uh, converting from speech feature to uh, uh, the, the, uh, text information, which is similar to the attention based approaches. However, the difference is that, as I mentioned, uh, whether we use a hard alignment or a soft alignment. And the uh, hard alignment uh, is actually not observable, right? As I mentioned, we have to consider all possible alignment paths and then uh, the estimating uh, the probability of each alignment. And then, for example, selecting the most probable alignment. So this uh, the hard alignment concept is included in the CTC and the RN transducer. How to include uh, this uh, the, 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 uh, alignment uh, information? How to include the, uh, the, some kind of additional variable to our model? PW given O doesn't have information about the, uh, the, the uh, alignment, uh, the, the, the variable Z. Right, and how to incorporate it? We use some rule. Yeah, that's. You know, I just wanted to repeat <laughs> so that people can understand you know, how to solve the problem. And by using some of the math, uh, we actually finally uh, the, uh, introduce uh, this uh, the, the uh, probability, um, which is uh, the uh, this. D is a path that uh, the, the producing the, this uh, the word sequence. So given, for example, the S, E, E, we, you know, given the word sequence, we still have a lot of other paths, right? As I mentioned before, which, you know, correspond to the showing the hard alignment, the variation of the hard alignment. So this Z is means all possible this, are the hard alignment. And then uh, the by, uh, the, this uh, PW given O is actually uh, the converted to uh, this uh, probability uh, by using the, uh, some kind of masses that I kind of put in the, uh, uh, the uh, next slide, but I will skip this. Probably, you know, too many equations, just, you know, uh, the, the, how to say, uh, the, makes you guys annoyed and the mix uh, that you guys may, you know, uh, the, the, uh, dislike speech recognition, which I really want to avoid. <laughs> yeah, speech recognition is beautifully based on the mass, but at the same time, you know, we do not have to stick so much about the mass. So I try to make a balance. So <laughs> sometimes I kind of stick, uh, the skip uh, some of the derivation. But anyway, uh, by using this kind of uh, the formulation, we actually uh, the, uh, represent the PW given O as a summation of all possible uh, alignment information, which sounds very reasonable, right? Uh, that we don't know which path we, uh, that if this kind of model is taken. So instead, we try to kind of uh, the sum all possible uh, the, the, uh, alignment, and then regarding it, that's our uh, probability that the PW given O. Uh, this is the kind of one model, which is uh, the introduced by using the random variable. But still, uh, this one is uh, the difficult because Z is sequence. This uh, the, the, uh, the information of the alignment and which is sequence. So actually, uh, the, the, we further factorize this one. Oh, sorry, this is T minus one. Apologize for my uh, mistake. I will fix it. So this is actually the almost same as the, the previous uh, probabilistic chain rule, except that this one is factorized by the output unit, like a character uh, the, uh, and so on. While uh, this case is uh, factorization, probabilistic chain rule is applied to the, this uh, the random variable Z. And it sounds like you know there is not so much big difference, right? Because this uh, also has the information uh, of the output. However, the, however, 
very nice property of this uh, the, the approach is that the length of Z and O are completely the same. Then that we actually can use uh, the simple uh, the, the neural network. Neural network, if the same input and the output are same length, we can use various techniques. If the input and the output are different, this is very difficult. We use attention or we use some kind of a, uh, the uh, techniques to somehow adjust the length and so on. So uh, the CTC or RM transducer is try to put us making this problem profitable uh, by using the same length of the uh, the, the uh, output and the corresponding the alignment. Okay. By the way, after this kind of uh, the formulation, uh, the, during the kind of uh, uh, inference, we just try to get the most likely uh, the pass, and this becomes kind of a, a recognition result. But anyway, uh, the, I will explain a bit more about the CTC RN transducer and so on detail. But I just want you to remember two things. One is that, that, that we incorporate the alignment variable, alignment sequence variable. And then second is similar to the attention-based approaches. We use a probability chain rule to factorize it. And then that, that we can make the problem actually tractable. By the way, that this is not completely true. That, that to make, for example, CTC works, we need to have a lot of aggressive uh, the condition independent assumption data. That I will explain it in the uh, data when I uh, move to the CTC. Okay, uh, now I move to the HMM case, the acoustic modeling case. The first big difference is that in the acoustic modeling cases, before the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, in the RN transducer CTC attention based encoder decoder, the, uh, the end to end based approaches, of course, one other uh, notable difference is the output unit, right? Before, uh, between phoning versus uh, the, the text that I mentioned already before. And uh, the other uh, the big difference is that actually the uh, previously the problem is word given observation. However, in the HM based approaches, the position of the observation uh, is at a swap, uh, swap. So it becomes an observation given uh, the, the, uh, the phoneme. So this comes from actually base theory that the, 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 I uh, the mentioned in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, lecture uh, in the last week. So this actually has some kind of a uh, difference in terms of the formulation. But basically the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, this uh, the, the difference, uh, the, regardless of this kind of difference, the most important component is the uh, concept is the hard alignment. So which already uh, we used. So in this sense, the RN transducer and the CTC are mostly the same uh, the, the formulation, uh, I would say. Although it's again the two different. One is whether the directly estimating the text uh, versus phoneme, uh, or uh, the, we use the, uh, the posterior, or we use the likelihood. It has some kind of a small difference. Okay, anyway, uh, the, uh, the, in the, uh, the, the, uh, the classical uh, HMM based speech recognition cases, uh, we first uh, the, the introduced the uh, uh, the um, the uh, the phoneme sequence, and then the target uh, the the problem is to make a relationship uh, between the observation and the uh, the phoneme sequence, and this is a kind of a little bit easier uh, the problem uh, than the uh, the attention of previous approaches since the observation of the acoustic feature and the phoneme are quite similar. So this is again the reason that people are using HMM-based approaches. And from now on, I will try to kind of explain a bit more uh, the detail about it 
but inside is very complicated. So I will uh, try to kind of use more like a high level concept. So first in the HMM based formulation, we usually assuming that uh, the observation and the corresponding phoneme alignment are given. And then the do the kind of a formula. This sounds like a little bit kind of a tricky, uh, but the, uh, and actually that we do in our kind of practical system, we even try to kind of uh, the estimate this boundary and so on. But due to the simplification of the, uh, the, uh, the formulation, please first assume that, that, that we know the alignment of the other uh, phoneme uh, and the corresponding uh, observations are given. And then try to uh, the, uh, the make this P or given now uh, the more uh, the, uh, tractable. And how to uh, the further kind of uh, the deal with this kind of uh, observation uh, the, uh, the equation because both input and output are sequence and also the lengths are different. And uh, uh, we usually uh, also using the conditional independence assumption very aggressively. For example, this is one example. Again, given that we know this alignment problem, this uh, the, the, the input and the output sequence problem is factorized with the two probability. One is the uh, given this uh, the phoneme C and T to uh, the generate this O125, and the rest other uh, O is kind of a good. Uh, produces the uh, uh, the six to eighteen. Um, this sounds like a very trivial, right? But this actually is based on the conditional independence assumption. Um, from here to here, I use the uh, the, the product rule, which actually doesn't change the difficulty. And then uh, from here. We assuming that to generate one to five, uh, the feature context six to eighteen would not be uh, the related. This kind of an okay assumption, right? And then to produce this one to five, uh, since this is you know already aligned here, so it's only kind of depending on the t, which is again okay assumption <laughs> although strictly speaking i don't think this is very correct uh same for the uh, the second component uh, or 66 to 18 actually it can be i would say it can be actually highly depending on this phoneme to generate this one but using the conditional independence assumption to <laughs> actually even uh, the eliminate uh, this uh, the, the, the dependency. And then the, the, uh, the result is like that. Uh, T is generating from, uh, the T is generating one to five. U is uh, the generating 16, six to 18. Uh, by doing this kind of conditional independence assumption, we can somehow factorize, factorize uh, this problem uh, into this, uh, the two, uh, the, uh, distributions uh, the, and so on. So uh, this is a kind of uh, the, uh, the, the usually we use for the phoneme based approaches. Again, uh, this is a little bit too close approximation, right? This is another reason that the people are the moving to the end-to-end uh, uh, the -end based approaches. Since end-to-end -end approaches doesn't have this kind of conditional independence assumption load. However, it is not so bad, right? The, this assumption is not so bad, right? Actually, it makes the main speech equation problem working. So uh, please accept this methodology. Uh, the, the, if you guys surprising this conditional independence assumption, you guys would surprise more. Uh, you guys would be surprised more because we put the conditional independence assumption at the many places to make the problem tractable. So anyway, the general uh, the case uh, that we actually uh, can factorize the, the O given L, the observation sequence given the, uh, the phoneme sequence, other the each phoneme and the corresponding the, uh, the observation, if we know the alignment information. And again, this can be actually later uh, the estimated. And about to solve this kind of a 
uh, the uh, to solve this kind of uh, the equation, uh, we use uh, the chain rule uh, and the conditional independence assumption uh, and so on. And <laughs> this is the actually uh, the this is not the the exact model. As I mentioned, uh, this is still spawning. We even actually introduced uh, uh, the, the, uh, the more uh, fine resolution information, which is state. This usually, for example, split the information of the phoneme to the three category. And this uh, the correspond to the beginning of the, 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 the T and the middle of the T and the end of the T. Uh, same for the older kind of our phonemes. So the, the people call this kind of our, uh, the street, uh, the, the models by explaining the, uh, our kind of our, uh, how to say, uh, the, 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 uh, the production systems. Since we uh, make a kind of our, our uh, body to make a resonance to uh, generate the phoneme, right? So which actually definitely has a uh, the, the transition uh, the the uh, uh, the uh, in stationary uh, the uh, the region when we kind of uh, the try to spoke speak the some phonemes right and then we have some kind of uh, the stational uh, phoneme regions and the data uh, if we move to the other uh, the phoneme or in this case is actually stopping the phoneme this will also have some transition. So beginning of the transition, uh, the, the, the middle of the, uh, the uh, stable region and the end of the transition should be represented by the different model. So this is actually uh, the concept of the state that the people actually use. Uh, and this uh, the state and the way of modeling this state is uh, the, 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 the called the hidden Markov model. So that is uh, represented uh, in the uh, famous this kind of uh, picture, and then uh, this uh, the uh, the hidden Markov model uh, representation uh, will be uh, discussed uh, in the next week. Okay, so let me summarize uh, today's uh, the, the lecture. So uh, I just want to. Uh, uh, Again, emphasize that the most difficult part in speech recognition is that how to align the input and the output. And uh, we need some concept of the alignment. There are two alignments. One is soft alignment based approaches. And then uh, one of the end to end system, attention based approach, is using this soft alignment. And the other alignment is the hard alignment that have an ex explicit. Uh, alignment of information of the input and the output. And then uh, the actually CTC, RN transducer, and HM based approaches are categorized with this uh, the hard alignment uh, based approaches. So these are uh, more like the very high level formulation of the, uh, the, uh, our uh, speech recognition programs. And then the, uh, later, First, in the next section, I will spend one lecture for the feature extraction, uh, which is the, uh, the one of the first component uh, of this speech recognition part, right? And then uh, the, the following uh, the, uh, the lectures, I will more diving into how to uh, the make uh, this problem uh, tractable by further using the approximation uh, for the uh, the, the, the alignment and the, uh, the, the output sequence uh, and so on. Okay, that's it. Uh, any question?